Hey kid, wanna grab some aesthetics? So, let's jump right on. Uh, let's delete the, the cube as always, poor cube. It's always getting deleted, let's also delete it white, we will not need it. Uh, and create a plane. Um, let me just turn on the screen cast key so you guys know what the hell is going on. Um, yeah, let's resize the point to something like this. This this should be enough. Okay, let's jump into edit mode and add a bunch of loop cuts. I think I'm going to create about 30 of these in each direction. Uh, hey. Control R, of course, and then scrolling with the mouse wheel. And that should be enough. Okay, uh, now uh, let's select a few points at random here in the middle. And the key to achieve the effect we desire is uh, proportional editing mode. So here, uh, or sort key O. And um, we need random proportional editing fall off. So it creates very random looking mountains, which is exactly what we want. So here in the middle, I only want a very small displacement just so it's not completely flat. I, I think that's too boring. And repeat the process to the left and to the right of our plane, but with a bigger displacement. So we get actual mountains, which is way cooler. I've been listening to a lot of Vaporwave recently, which I know it, it I, I just think it's such a great way of discovering new bands. I've discovered Death Grips through random remixes, and now it's one of my favorite bands. Uh, it's crazy. Um, by the way, recalculate the normals. This is important so it avoids uh, artifacts. And yeah, I would say this is cool enough. Perhaps let's just increase this displacement a tiny bit more. Uh, like so. Okay, awesome. Let's select our camera view, press N, so we open the properties tab, and let's take off lock camera to view. So when I change my view around, it also, the camera follows, basically. And we're going to put our camera at the top of the plane. Something like this. And I'm also going to select the camera itself so I can adjust the focal lens. So basically this changes the field of view of our scene and I just think it looks way cooler when we tr uh, tune this a bit down. We can catch much more of the scene. I just think it's, it's better. And this is good enough, I would say. Let's take off our camera to view. The, the camera is adjusted. And let's jump right into creating the sun. Uh, so, as you probably noticed, in a lot of these vaporwave uh, scenes, uh, the sun is never uh, just a cylinder, right? You have these like uh, cuts. And we could create that effect using a, a normal map. Uh, but, uh, I actually prefer to just literally cut it off using the boolean modifier and that's what we're going to do. So let's position our sun in the other end of the, the plane in relation to the camera. Let's rotate it 90 degrees in the y direction. Let's increase it like so. Let's see cannot be as big and let's make it a whole lot less thick. The sun does not have such a big thickness. This should be enough. Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm just going to position the camera a wee bit higher, like so. Great. Uh, and we can increase the radius of the sun, like so. Great, uh, so what we're going to do now, we're going to create an array to subtract to the sun so it creates those those lines, that cool effect. Um, so I'm just going to uh, decrease its thickness in the z direction and increase its size in the y direction, like so. This should be enough. Uh, 
we can just to be safe increase it a wee bit more and position it at the top of the plane like so this is looking great okay so let's uh, use the ray modifier so we can just create a whole bunch of these uh, and we do that by creating a relative offset in the z direction I think I'm going to go with minus 10 that's good enough ah, perhaps it's a bit too big minus 7 perhaps yeah that's that's what I'm looking for great and let's just increase the number of objects we create so it covers the whole area of the Sun so this should be enough and it is great and go ahead and just press apply so this object here what we just created is called cube and we have to memorize that so when we create a boolean modifier on the cylinder you have to select the cylinder not the the cube select the operation to difference and the object to cube and press apply now we can delete what we just created because the, the, the effect is already done and this is great because basically we just modeled everything we need uh, we just have to set up the materials right now and the materials are extremely simple in this case uh, I'm just going to put in cycles render so I use uh, the nodes and let's start this uh, so I, would I will just name this mountains and switch on the node editor and the diffuse shader is fine for what we want I'm going to put a very dark bluish color is what I'm going for something like this should do it should be quite cool of course our Sun has to emit light so let's switch the diffuse modif uh, shader actually for an emission shader and put a very bright pinkish color which is very suitable for our graphic style um, now Contr contrary to what you might think the strength of this emission cannot be very big otherwise it loses its color it just turns bright white so what the Sun actually does uh, is it contr contrary to what you might think is not the primary source of light for that we have to add another plane which we will position at the top of our scene I'm going to press 7 so we can position it in the middle like so and name this like white source or whatever and put an emission shader with a strength of I don't know like 20 20 should be enough let's test this out mm, it's, yeah it's looking good it's exactly what we want um, I'm just going to reposition it it's not centered at all I actually messed up earlier but like so it should be good enough and that's great okay uh, let's just do a final um, light so we increase the reflection of this pink light here nearby it gives a, a cooler effect and for that I'm going to add an area um, a, light, a light source let's increase uh, its height like so uh, put it in the middle rotate it in the y direction and it's going to emit also a pinkish light let's see if this is enough yeah as you can see it increases uh, the amount of pink reflection which is what we want but I'm going to crank its strength yes exactly what I want let's check this out yes I'm very satisfied with with this look and yeah we just finished modeling we finished materials uh, the final step to uh, achieve the, um, the effect 
the vaporwave effect, as we can check this, uh, these wallpapers out, is we have to basically highlight the edges of our scene. Uh, so it, uh, it gets these, well, highlighted edges is the word, I think, that best describes it. So what we are going to do, we're going to create uh, those edges the same in the same manner that you would render a wireframe. And I discovered this because I wanted to render a, a project I had in wireframe. And it's it's surprisingly easy. So we jump into edit mode. Uh, I selected the plane. The plane is the only thing we are going to, to want this effect on. Jump into edit editing mode, select all of the edges. It's important that you have edges selected and press control E. And we can select this option, mark freestyle edges. Now let's jump ahead and click that. And now on our render uh, panel, we will tick this box, freestyle. One pixel should be enough. And now we go into the um, render, render layers and we are going to tick off the silhouette and border. Um, uh, how do you call this checkboxes exactly and only accept edge marks and the final step we want this to have a very bright bluish color so we jump here this should be a cool effect and we're going to give a test render so let's jump into sampling mode render samples only 10 and let's give this a go render. It first renders the whole scene and only then it adds the lines and it looks exactly as we would expect. And this is great. Uh, so basically we can just render this uh, for real now and we jump into Photoshop for the OS touches. So what's, I don't know, 700 samples should be cool enough. and. Yeah, let's just render this. So I was just about to start recording this next part and the trash truck decided to come in my street, which is fine, but had to delay this a bit, but it's okay. So I've got my final render here. As you probably noticed, it's slightly different. This is another test run I did for this tutorial, but the principle is exactly the same. So no problem. Uh, what we're going to do is give the final touches for this to become the full-fledged vaporwave wallpaper it deserves to be. So I created a Photoshop file, um, you know, very standard uh, HD uh, resolution and imported our final render. So the first step uh, of, of this uh, of this final part is I'm going to insert another photo. I got this photo from a very cool website called pexels.com. I'm going to link it in this, this description, of course. And this is a very pretty uh, landscape from the a starred sky. And we're going to, why can't I move you? Yo, bro. I think I first have to rasterize it. Them finally, that was tough. Um, but this is still too bright. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, paint this uh, this layer completely uh, black. Actually, no, I think I'm going to paint it a very, very dark blue, something like this. And instead of this being normal, I'm going to use uh, multiply. Yes, like so. Great, that's exactly what I wanted. And believe it or not, this is nearly done. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create two copies of our wallpaper using control J and I'm going to turn the opacity to something like 20%. This should be enough. 20% and you're, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing. Well, I'm just going to slide these two copies to the side like so 
so it creates this very phased uh, hazy look Th this was way too much it now it's just looks distorted it doesn't look good at all so I'm going to decrease it slightly yes something like this it looks way cooler and uh, yeah just <laughs> it's very thematic to the aesthetics uh, look and I think the final step is going to be well instead of this I'm going to just adjust the, co the colors and I'm going to do that in here uh, color equilibrium and I'm going to increase the pinkish look exactly like this and I'm going using a brush I think this this ought to do it something like um, something like this should be enough I'm going to put in a screen I'm going to copy this color and add a glow like so with the brush and I would call this good uh, this is I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it was very enjoyable for me. Um, I think it's a very good tutorial uh, for beginners. If you never used proportional editing before, if you never used uh, the freestyle edges before, I think this is a great start. And you can use these uh, these principles to make your own animations. Uh, to make your own um, backgrounds if you own a music channel or whatever. And uh, I hope I see you again in another tutorial. Bye!